Towards the close of 1926, I was nominated as successor to the late Dr. Frank Hay as Director General of the Mental Hospital Services in New Zealand. But before taking up duty, I went on a tour of the United States, Canada, Great Britain, Europe, to study mental hospitals and kindred institutions and the latest methods of treatment, in which pleasant pursuit I spent nearly a year. Of many interesting experiences on the continent, I found none more fascinating than a visit to the colony of Giel, near Antwerp. The colony is not a mental hospital or institution in the ordinary acceptance. It is a community of 20,000 people who accept in their own homes the care of nearly 3,000 mentally afflicted people. The history of Giel Colony goes back for 1,300 years and originates in the legend of St. Dinfna. Dinfna was a daughter of an Irish king who lived in the 6th century. Along with Gerbern, her father confessor, she fled from the unnatural attentions of her sire and landed in Giel, where her father and his soldiers discovered the fugitives. Dinfna was decapitated by the soldiers and the two martyrs were buried near the site on which now stands the church of St. Dinfna. How the shrine of St. Dinfna came to acquire its reputation for aiding in the cure of the mentally afflicted is now lost in the mists of ancient lore. But so wide was the fame of the miracles recorded there that by the 10th century, pilgrims intent on recovery were flocking to the district in large numbers. As time went on, the influx of patients became so great that arrangements had to be made for the lodgement with the local townsfolk, and thus arose the system of familiar care, which is the distinguishing feature of the Giel colony today. Wabi Sabi buildings are small and intimate and encompass their occupants like a protective cocoon. Like the Japanese tea house, places Wabi Sabi are for refreshment, ritual and repose. The tranquility of their environment enhances one's ability to connect with transcendental states of consciousness. Such surroundings arouse stillness, seclusion, Solitude. In 1931, Siegfried E. Katz of the New York State Psychiatric Institution published a study, Color Preference in the Insane. Katz tested 134 hospitalized mental health patients each patient was asked which colour they preferred from a choice of six. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. Blue was most popular. 38% of schizophrenics and manic depressives gave preference to blue and 42% of all other patients. For red as first choice, the percentage of votes were as follows. Manic depressives, 16%. Other diseases, 15%. Schizophrenics, 12%. Long-term patients of three years or more were less emphatic about blue, preferring green and yellow. Katz suggested considering furnishing the quarters of groups of patients according to the findings of the survey. Hospital staff appear to have taken Katz's insights into consideration. New York firm Bragand Uniforms cites its most popular uniform colors as royal blue, dark gray, dark green, and red. However, a study carried out 54 years later found that a conclusive relationship between colour choice and psychiatric illness has not been established. With the exception of two or three ward workers who wore their own clothing, the patients of Ward 6 were dressed similarly in hospital clothing and apart from the addition of extra underclothing and warm jerseys in cold weather, wore the same type of garments, summer and winter. These consisted of coarse calico combinations, long after combinations had ceased to be part of the normal female wardrobe. Shapeless, drab mother hubbards, thick woolen socks, and those heavy boots that were such a menace to patients and staff alike. 
An occasional scarlet Mother Hubbard relieved the monotony, but these were issued not for aesthetic appeal, but because determined escapees clad in them could more easily be watched on the large courtyard. A few heavy canvas Mother Hubbards were worn also, these by patients going through a phase of determined destructiveness during which they persistently ripped up their clothing or by persistent nudists who habitually tore off their clothing to run round naked, regardless of the temperature. It was more difficult to wriggle out of the heavy canvas. Due to the asylum's isolation, staff were housed on the premises. Senior staff had their own private houses or cottages where they lived with their families, their children having the run of the grounds as their backyard. Initially, nursing staff slept in the main buildings and the wards until 1928, when the first nurses' home was built. Organised sports clubs provided recreation and relaxation for the staff. As team members were often on call, the games were played at home on hospital grounds, providing regular Saturday entertainment for patients. In 1935, Hospital AFC was the top club soccer team in New Zealand, winning the First Division Championship and the Chatham Cup. For 50 years, Hospital AFC was a force to be reckoned with, and eight players were selected from its stable to represent New Zealand. The club are now known as Western Suburbs, and their training academy occupies one of the old villas. In 1942, we had an experience which must be unique in mental hospitals the world over, an experience which should convince the most reactionary as to how closely the conduct of mental hospital patients approximates to that of normal people, given decent conditions and an absence of rules and restraints traditional to most mental hospitals. On a night of July in that year, a severe earthquake in the Wellington district so seriously damaged the Pororua Mental Hospital that the greater part of it had to be evacuated forthwith as we did not have the accommodation for all the 600 evacuees at the other hospitals, we requisitioned New Zealand's two best-known tourist hotels, the Chateau Tongariro in the National Park and the Wairaki Hotel in the thermal area near Lake Taupo. Both the Chateau and the Wairaki are hotels of deluxe standards, and there was much speculation on the part of the New Zealand public as to how these hotels would be rendered safe for our patients. We made them safe by the simple expedient of